Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Carex, the Raging Isle deck, featuring the 4 mana 017 legendary Leviathan Crab that says spells your opponents cast that target Carex costs 2 more to cast, and for 3 mana Carex gets plus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of islands you control. So the goal of the deck is to win with Carex using some enchantments, and and in order to do that, we need Sentinel's Eyes, a 1-mana enchantment giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance. You can also escape it from the graveyard by exiling 2 cards. And then Solid Footing, a 1-mana enchantment aura with Flash, enchanting a creature giving it plus 1 plus 1, and says as long as the enchanted creature has Vigilance, it assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. This is the only effect like this in Standard, as most of the other cards rotated out, like Quatly and High Alert. So Solid Footing plus Sentinel's Eyes is how we need to do it. So if we put both of these on our Raging Isle, it turns into a 219 and attacks for 19 damage. And then if we want to make it around 20 we can maybe add a staggering insight to give plus one plus one and lifelink and if we connect with a player we also get to draw a card or we can maybe give our raging isle flying with a rousing read and also give it plus one plus one so we can attack for 20 damage in the air so that's the primary game plan of the deck, and as a backup plan we also have Seasoned Hellblade, 2 mana for a 3-1 Human Warrior, and we can discard a card, tap the Seasoned Hellblade, and it gains Indestructible until end of turn. So this is the perfect target for these cheap enchantments, especially Staggering Inside, giving it lifelink so we can potentially outrace the opponent, and can also help us draw additional cards. So those are the two win conditions in the deck. I could have potentially added even more alternate win conditions, like maybe Archon of Sun's Grace, which is great with Constellation and all these enchantments. Could have also added a little bit more interaction, but instead I just wanted to make the game plan of Carrick's plus enchantments as consistent as possible. So we've got plenty of card draw spells to help us assemble all these various combo pieces, starting out with Opt at 1 mana to scry 1 and draw card. At 2 mana we've got the full playset of Omen of the Sea, when it enters the battlefield, let's us scry 2 and then draw a card, and then afterwards we can still for 3 mana sacrifice it to scry 2. And then at 3 mana we also have the full playset of Thirst for Meaning, which lets us draw 3 cards at instant speed, and then we have to discard 2 cards unless we discard an enchantment card, and sometimes we have additional copies of Sentinel's Eyes or Solid Footing we don't mind discarding, so that also pairs quite nicely with this deck. And then Heliot's Pilgrim is kind of the final piece of the puzzle, as a 3 mana 1 2 Human Cleric that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for an aura card, reveal it and put it into our hand, so this can also help us find the missing enchantment that we need, whether it's a Sentinel size, solid footing, staggering insight, or a rousing reed to fly over. And yeah, that's essentially the entire deck. And then going over the mana base, we've got four copies of Temple of Enlightenment, which helps us scry one when it enters a battlefield. Sadly, we don't have any pathways in this deck, since there's no blue-white pathway. And then 10 basic islands and 8 basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a solid hand. And, uh, yeah, just need to draw a few lines, and we're good to go. Got to turn to Hollow Blade as a distraction. Pilgrim can search up Sentinel's Eyes, and then we even have the Rousing Reed to fly over. Turn to Houndmaster. Okay. So this could be a Winota deck with a bunch of dogs. I could play Hellblade, I probably should still. There's an argument for playing the Temple. So that I'm guaranteed a turn 3 Heliot's Pilgrim into a turn 4 Carrix. But I'll just play the Temple next turn. Don't really want to discard anything from my hand at the moment. Since we kind of need all the combo pieces. Alright, so I can play Temple and Opts. Thirst doesn't seem needed.
Let's see if they have a Winota here with one non-human in play. It's gonna just be Igneous Kerr. And a pack leader, alright. So next turn the dogs will be able to attack unopposed. And Master does attack. I mean, I don't mind trading my opts for the watchdog here, essentially. I guess I can opt first and see what I draw. Can bottom the temple. Find another pilgrim. So I'm gonna go turn for Carrix. Then if I draw a land, I can Pilgrim, Salt Footing, and Sentinel's Eyes. Can probably discard one Pilgrim still. Although the Pilgrim could also find a Lifelink enchantment. Which makes it very difficult for me to die. Although Rousing Reed's just gonna kill them. I don't know. I'll just discard a Pilgrim here. Play Carrix, can discard a second copy. And then I wouldn't mind drawing a land, so we can already attack for 19 damage, essentially. Aha, there's Winota. Glad I killed the non-human. But yeah, we won't be able to kill the two dogs. Finds a venture with protection from even. So can block that one. And another Winota. So we'll just block Winota and then uh, probably trade for the Houndmaster by discarding Carrix. I might need to get the lifelink enchantment with Helid's Pilgrim. Although, never mind, my point's just dead here. Pilgrim gets Sentinel's Eyes. Put Sentinel's Eyes on Carrix. And Assault Footing. And attack for 22. Easy peasy. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Thirst can maybe help us assemble the missing combo pieces. And sure, I'll keep a temple. Facing Hateful Eidolon, so some sort of black enchantment deck. Probably want to opt before I play the temple here. Do I need another opts? Next turn I can Thirst or I can Pilgrim to look for the uh, missing enchantments. Another Archfiend's Vessel. So this is one of the few matchups where Hellblade is actively bad, because if they're pulling Hateful Eidolon, they might have cards like Deadweight or Miner's Grasp, which can kill through Indestructible. So definitely gonna keep that in mind. Pilgrim would also die to a Miner's Grasp or Deadweight here. So I could play Pilgrim, I could just Thirst, and then discarding Sentinel's Eyes is fine, because we can just get it back. And then maybe keep the solid footing as a surprise. If they're gonna Myers grasp their own Archfiend's Vessel to then draw a card and maybe bring it back from the graveyard. So I'm happy I didn't play the Helix Pilgrim here. Discard. I mean, probably still the Sentinel's Eyes. and hope that Carrix survives. And then next turn we've got the Wombo Combo. Can even add a Staggering Insight to the mix. Alright, Voice Strider does mean they can chum block with the Goat pretty easily. So 
So finding flying enchantment with Helid's Pilgrim is key. So I feel like this turn I want to heal its Pilgrim. Mm, I guess I can still escape the Sentinel's Eyes first. That happens, and then I'll attack. If my opponent takes it, I can flash in the Salt Footing. It's not lethal since there are 28, but... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this outcome. And then I can play Pilgrim, searching up the Rousing Reed, and then end of turn, flash and solid footing to be mana efficient. So yeah, if they can kill Carrix, we can do some damage next turn. It's not going to be a one-hit KO since they're at 28, but would still be pretty strong. Could have saved the Pilgrim with solid footing. I don't think that's necessary. That weight on Carrix just to shrink it down a bit. Fair enough. Was trying her down. And her opponent explodes. They know about a rousing reed. Staggering insight can gain us a ton of life. And yeah, that's game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this looks like the type of hand where we're gonna play a turn to Hallow Blades and enchant it, which is fine. It's not my preferred way to win, but. It still gets the job done. Facing a turn one Gilded Goose. So next turn probably Staggering Insights. Aha, uh -huh, opponent's playing a Mutate deck. They could have a Pouncing Shore Shark to bounce my Hollow Blade, which is pretty effective. But I think I still want to play these Tangering Insights, and then I guess we might as well scry before drawing, potentially. Opponent takes it. So we've got Solid Footing and Sentinel's Eyes in case we find Carrix. Can still just put uh, Sentinel's Eyes on the Hallow Blade as well. Maybe go drawing with the Omen of the Sea. Hope my opponent doesn't have a Shore Shark to bounce the Hallow Blade. They could also potentially just go over the top with uh, an Auspicious Terex and put a whole bunch of permanents in play that can jump in front of the Hallow Blade. So finding a Heliod's Pilgrim to give flying could also be useful. As they mutate a Dreamtail Heron on the Symbiotes. Costs one less because of the Symbiote's ability. They discarded a Great Horn, so their hand must be pretty stacked, maybe light on lands. Ooh, there's Carrix. So, yeah, I guess I can attack. See if they want to chump. And we can maybe draw land for Carrix. Draw another Carrix instead. I do want to hit my land drop, so I'll play Omen now. Bottom, bottom. And there's my lands. Um, I guess I could put a Sentinel's Eyes on the Hallow Blade here. Sure. Although the plan next turn is to play the Raging Isle. And then 
Might need to find a rousing reed to fly over, although my opponent has multiple flying chum blockers. And there's the auspicious Terex. So, yeah, let's see what our opponent can find. A mirror shield to protect their mutated creature, I see. And they hit another Sterix, that's a 6-6 six, six on defense, I guess. So... Sadly, the solid footing is a bit of a numbo with the Vigilance here, as we'll deal damage equal to toughness rather than power if we flash this in, if we attack. I could still put the Sentinel's Eyes on the Hellblade just to have a 6-powered creature to attack past the Sterix. And then we can still play the Raging Isle and hopefully draw another Sentinel's Eyes later or heal its Pilgrim. I think that's better here. Opponent takes it. I'll put an upkeep stop just in case I want to scry with Omen of the Sea. So our opponent's just going to keep on putting stuff on this auspicious Sterix, hoping to find more chum blockers. But in the meantime, we can maybe gain life with these staggering insights. If they find a way of bouncing my creatures, that could be bad. This would also be a spot where having a way to give protection could maybe win the game, because they only have green creatures. So let's say I had a Alsaid of life's bounty, I could give one of my creatures protection from green and just hit them in the face. And yes, yeah, sadly, there's the Pouncing Shore Shark. Let's see which creature they're gonna bounce, but now any future mutated creature can keep bouncing my stuff. They're gonna bounce the Hollow Blade. Okay. There's a tiny chance I can win if they don't play around solid footing. Although that's unlikely to work. Opponent I'm gonna put the mirror shield on the Sterix to protect it. And hits me for six. So if I wanna attempt the play where my opponent doesn't block Carrix, I probably don't want to put the staggering insight on it, otherwise they're more incentivized to chum block. So, let's escape Sentinel's Eyes. And then move to combats and hope they take it. Opponent chumps. I guess I can use Carrix's ability to kill the goose. And then still play Hollow Blade, because I don't really want to put all my eggs in one basket here. Because they're definitely going to be able to bounce my Carrix once again. Triple Sterix. Hits a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe we win by decking the opponent here. I guess we'll probably die before that happens. Yeah, sadly bounce spells are the best way to deal with our combo. And with Shore Shark they've got a repeatable way of doing that.
So it's not looking good. Opponent's got 17 cards remaining. And I'm at 19, facing quite army. And they've got plenty more mutate creatures in hand. And now they don't even have to target the Sterix if they don't want to. They can just mute it onto the Shore Shark to avoid drawing too many cards. Gem Racer gonna blow up my Omen of the Sea. And let's see what else the Sterix brings to the table. I mean, if they're not careful and they hit like four creatures, they all draw with the Great Henge. You know, opponent could potentially die, but I think they're probably gonna stop playing stuff now. They're down to six cards. Uh oh. Opponent's got one card remaining. And Great Henge is not a May ability. Wow. <laughs> ah, what a game. Well, sometimes you win with Hysterics, sometimes you lose with Hysterics. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And uh, I take this as a sign we're playing on the Carrick's battlefield here, as you can see. And the sand's not actually all that bad since we have so many card draw effects to hit our land drops. I'll try it. Although turn one weasel back is probably gonna punish our slow start. Ambusher. Some sort of goblin tribal deck here. Just need to find lands. That's a land. Just go temple plus opts. Keep all the lands. Alright, we're hitting our land drops for now. It's a lot of goblins. And then this turn we can Omen, should maybe Omen main phase in case I find another Temple of Enlightenment. And bottom both, I think. Alright, so I will be able to play a Carrix on curve. And we've got Solid Footing and Sentinel's Eyes, so all we need now is for my opponent maybe not to block. So I don't have triple white yet, so I can't play all three one mana enchantments next turn. Although I can maybe play Omen first to try and find one. So we can attack for 20. And then... Probably want to block a weasel back, but it doesn't matter since they have another one. Well, I guess... Uh, so I can hit my opponent for 19 damage. Which isn't quite 20. But if Omen finds a planes, I could just win right now. That's sadly not a planes, so we'll bottom. Rousing reads. Staggering inside is probably the safest play here. And then just stay back. Thanks with all. Take five. If they have a shock, we still go to one. Do they have a chum blocker here they can play? All right, shocks me down to one. And hit you for 20. Alright, didn't face a hyper-competitive deck here, probably just a red starter deck with a few modifications. 
but I'll take it on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with another solid hand. We've got Omen of the Sea to hit our land drops, maybe find our Sentinel's Eyes facing Ruin Cramp, a mill deck. So Scrying here is not super relevant, but I guess I'll still get the tap land out of the way. Ooh, keeping Sentinel's Eyes on top is actually perfect, since they're gonna mill me and I can escape it out of the graveyard. It's even better than drawing it. So that worked out nicely. So we're gonna have a turn for Carrix. Hopefully my opponent can bounce it, and then... We could potentially win on turn 5 with Solid Footing, Sentinel Size, and Staggering Insight. The fact that Solid Footing has Flash can sometimes catch the opponent off guard. Although, if they mill both my copies of Rousing Reed, I can no longer find one with my Helios Pilgrim, so that's also something to keep in mind. Opponent is playing red as well, maybe for Teferi's Tutelage and some red card draw. And if they did mill the second copy of Rousing Reed now, there's a Teferi's Tutelage. Should I avoid drawing with Omen of the Sea here? It is worth considering. So I'm not going to have access to Rousing Reed, so I basically have to attack with Carrix multiple times past all these random chum blockers. I don't really need any additional enchantments. So I think I don't play the Omen here. I guess the only reason to play it is I want to find a third white source so I can play Insight, Footing, and Sentinel Size in the same turn. Alright, I guess I'll play the Omen still. And then Pilgrim again doesn't do all that much. Do I even bother playing the Helios Pilgrim? Playing Thirst seems kind of sketchy. Although it would maybe help me find triple whites for the one-hit KO. Yeah, I guess I can just cry with Omen end of turn instead. To avoid drawing, but to still potentially help me find white mana. If my opponent's interaction is burn spells, then we're good. They're not gonna kill Carrix. If they have some bounce spells, things can get messy. So we're down to 29 cards. Opponent's gonna cast Thirsts. They maybe should have waited until after I finished scrying, because now I still get to scry after they mill me. Well, our opponent knows about solid footing, so it's not gonna catch them by surprise here. So play Carrix. And then we do have solid footing plus sentinel's eyes, unless they exile my graveyard. Seventeen cards remain. Another tutelage. Uh oh. Yeah, if they have any red card draw left here, we're probably dead. Thirteen cards remaining. Secret Keeper mills me for four. Down to nine. Oh man. If only I had drawn an untapped white source, I could have maybe stolen the win. But now they have all these secret keepers they can play as chum blockers, so... Yeah, it's uh, not gonna work. And of course, pumping Carrix with the ability doesn't help in this instance. So I'll attack. Put on blocks. I guess I'll salt footing.
But yeah, the rousing reeds getting milled early also made a big difference this game. Otherwise, we could have maybe used rousing reed to fly over. We had three mana to spend here, so it would have been perfect to deal 20 damage. But now they can just play secret keeper to chump. And we're just gonna die to the tutelages. Yeah, that's too bad. There's no way we can uh, still win here, sadly. So, yeah. Staggering insights. And hope my opponent forgets to block. Is my out. And they'd have thirst anyway. So they could have won before uh, I managed to attack here. Alright, GG's. I guess I'll die by my own thirst here. So we were the ones that ended the game, but sadly it didn't result in a victory this time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And what do I think of this hand? It's probably a hand that wins with Hollow Blade. Um, don't have white mana yet, but Omen of the Sea can help. And then we've got Staggering Insight to put on a Hollow Blade and Pilgrim to find another enchantment. Yeah, I guess it's okay. Turn one and needle verge pathway. Did find a white mana, so we can play turn two Hellblade after all. And a core blade master's so opponent on a red white warrior equipment deck. They shouldn't have too many removal spells for my Hellblade, so that's good news. And staggering inside is going to make it very difficult for them to race us. So, insights on the Hellblade, attack, and then the Pilgrim can maybe find a Rousing Reed to give Hellblade flying. Ambusher, sure. Don't really want to put solid footing on a Hellblade, typically. So let's just attack. Ooh, alright, change of plans. Can maybe try and win with Carrix after all. And then Pilgrim can find the Sentinel's Eyes, we've got solid footing. Carrix is not a coward, so it can block the Intimidator. Alright, so I don't have triple white, so I can cast all my white spells this turn. So maybe I start with Omen, in case I just naturally draw the Sentinel's Eyes. And then I can still attack with the Hollow Blade and play Pilgrim to get Sentinel's Eyes for next turn. Or I might need to find uh, a rousing reed to fly over, but nah. Think we'll be fine. 
If our opponent has to chum block every turn on Carrix, we're probably in fine shape. Block here. Can chump here. Let's see if they block Carrix or not. They don't. Surprise solid footing for 19 damage. Sweet. Alright, so red white warriors also falls to our blue white Carrix deck. I'm sure they were shell shocked there in the end. So yeah, we may not have faced the most competitive standard decks out there, but this is also kind of a meme deck that's not meant for competitive play, but a ton of fun if you can uh, get it going. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.